I wasn't watching live, but I did see a clip where Dan had Vince Warfolk on, the <laughs> former New England Patriot on. And, uh, you know, Dan does his research. He's uh, always very thoughtful and sensitive and asking the right <laughs> questions at the right time, doing his research. And, um, you know, you ask Vince about his wife, and you always love that Vince talked about his wife and very candid about his relationship with his wife. And then all of a sudden, what happened? I don't know if your people have the comedic uh, sound that can be played on what happens so you can enjoy the delightful awkwardness uh, on your own. But I and I also don't know how they edited the end of it, because I do remember shouting at the end of the segment, whether they left it in or not. I do not know. This would have never happened to Dan Patrick, uh, just <laughs> shouting it into the into the distance somewhere but uh, the the short story is that i love talking to vince wilfork 340 pound menace stronger than anybody in in the league about romantic things and his articulation <laughs> of softness and love and uh the way he talks about his wife is really beautiful unfortunately i was unaware that they divorced a few, a few, a few years ago <laughs> <laughs> the look on everybody's face, including the producers who probably realized they maybe didn't do as much research as they needed to. And then Stu Gotts breaks the tension. He tries to, you know, clean up the spill in aisle six there. Wow. You, the look we, on your face, you were stunned when all of a sudden Vince goes, Bianca and I didn't make it. Yes, and he starts it, talking yeah. about his other. And Dan, he got married in 2020. It wasn't like yes. October of 2022. <laughs> Look, this was a breach and a failure in a number of different ways. Um, it it could have gone worse, but only if he had told me his wife had passed away, yeah. which is what I was what I what, what what I was worried about. But the look that you saw on my face, and I, I we do love when these moments happen on our show, and we can sink fully into the awkward disrepair. But the look that you saw on my face wasn't merely, oh, my God, how unprofessional of me <laughs> and how awkward this is. But because I sort of associate this jolly, big, giant man with romance, the look you also saw on my face was the heartbreak of, oh, no, love has died. <laughs> not just not just him. it wasn't his wife that died, which that fear came over me. Um, it's just love. It's love has died. <laughs> And Vince Wilfork is here to announce it to me in the most awkward, embarrassing way possible. Can you guys play that? Do you guys? It's too. We, that... we just we played it uh, last uh, look in. Uh, it's a little too long now to play, but we oh, we played God, it about twenty it minutes ago. But <laughs> when you when all of a sudden, I mean, you set it up and you, you know you're waiting for that great answer. And, yes, oh, it's a big wind up. You know, it's a full wind up, <laughs> not from the stretch position. Uh, Bianca and I didn't make it, and I. <laughs> it's it, but it's not. It's funny for a number of different reasons, but that phrasing is perfect. Like if like if they didn't survive an airplane crash. <laughs> we, we, did, we, we did not we did not make we did not make it this love you speak of so eloquently Dan I'm sorry to inform you that it died three years ago and I've replaced it with another Vince Vince lost a hundred pounds and a wife <laughs> uh, I I need you to help me though like what are the I, I really did shout that at the end of that episode, whether they ended up putting it in or not. I shouted, this never would have happened to Dan Patrick. So I ask you now, as a, a, a pillar of professionalism, as an exceptional interviewer, what are the greatest rookie mistakes that an interviewer can uh, can make? Because uh, the now I, I would also argue there has not been a better or more memorable uh, interview moment from a Vince Wilfork interview in his entire Hall of Fame career because uh, yeah. because of what happened ends up being wonderful because we can mock ourselves. But what are the mistakes, uh, A, that you have made that feel like that, which I doubt that you have, or mistakes that you know to avoid because you're too savvy? Well, I I like to have an idea of the answer before I ask the question. And it's, really? it's not a pre-interview, but I like to at least have a thought of what is what I'm going to be asking you. Um, and, and really, it's just kind of the bare bones of knowing who his wife is, her name, 
and how long they've been married. <laughs> if I'm going down this road, Dan, then I'm, That's correct. I've, I've got to go, okay, he's been married to Bianca. They got married, uh, blah, 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 blah. Because if you do your research, you're probably going to find out that he got remarried in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, uh, uh, if, if that research had been done, uh, <laughs> yeah. But you almost asked a damn good question. But if you did ask that question, <laughs> if you the question was really good, but it, it you know he screwed up the answer. He's the one well, that got divorced, man. <laughs> well, and the marriage. He's it, it, it both. Are, he's to blame for. Uh, yes, I, it was purposeful. I will say this part was purposeful. I'm not going to say the whole thing was purposeful, but I did want to start there because as an interview technique, I don't need to explain to you. Oh, let's get this guy talking about something away from football that he's also passionate about, something that he doesn't mind talking about to see if we can soften uh, Vince Wilfork up for. <laughs> later in the interview unfortunately uh the softening uh is not uh <laughs> the softening i what one of the things i love dan i don't think your producers would react this way for all their indifference about the pigs in a blanket all my producers leapt into action to laugh at me yeah like they 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 they, they uh, one of them was described as the guy on a submarine that's sinking uh the that immediately <laughs> rushes to whatever it is the emergency sonar stuff is because he's been trying trained for this scenario all his life. Like they just jumped in with the ability to mock me instantaneously. Well, I would be concerned as I'm reading the body language on this video, three of your guys are on their <laughs> phones. They're not even listening to you do the interview. Well, no, 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 no. See, if you notice in the back, Billy Gill, the anarchist among us, the evil cat among us, what you will notice is he's not generally listening. He's pointing here and there until he hears the mistake. Then all of a sudden, his headsets are on and he flies in to tell Stugatz, we've got a maximum mock here immediately. Like you see him jump into action like, like at the fire station when they, they still slide down the pole. To get, you see him. He wasn't doing his job before then, but then he realized, oh, this is a good place for me to do my job. Would you have blamed your producer on the air? Oh, no, it's, uh, it's just whatever it is that ends up with me being mocked the most yeah. is going to be always the... Uh, always the funniest but it was chris cody's fault yeah of course <laughs> <laughs>